Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's other runtime action we're going to go over is the Generate Object runtime. And what this runtime is essentially saying is we are going to call in an object we have created into the current scene. So before we get into the settings, I'm just going to show you the object we have here. It's called a Generate Bot. It's got an initial wait state with no runtime actions called. After a certain amount of time passes, it then comes down to a Generate Object state which is where we will add in the runtime. So I'm going to click on, we want to generate an object. And the first setting is going to be select the object to generate. This is going to be a click to pull down the drop down menu, and you will have a list of all the objects that you currently have created. I'm going to select that we want to generate the chair object that I have created. And then we can go down to the second setting, which is the position. So where do you want this newly generated object to go? And by default, it says that you want it to go to the center of this object. And by this object, it's referring to the object that is calling the runtime, which happens to be the generate bot. So if we were to leave the default settings and click play, we would see that the chair would spawn in the center of this object. And if we click back into it and we use the sub menu of use a connection point, we can use a connection point that we've already set up, which I've set up as generate point, to further specify where we want it to spawn. And if I hit OK and hit play, you'll see that the chair spawned at the connection point where I set it. Now I'll show you here in the animations, this is where I set that connection point. So you can see that it did work. And one thing to note is that when it's saying the center of, it's referring to the animation origin, which is the center of the horizontal line and the vertical line, where they come together. That is the origin. Now you have a couple options. If you click on your, anima your animation from the animation list, you have a couple options where you can floor it, which I have. You can center it, which would bring the origin a little closer to the center of the generate bot. So just keep that in mind. If you need something that is specifically overlapping something, then that will be something you need to pay attention to. So if we go back into our generate object settings, the next setting is the center of object locked by this object. So if we click on this, we can now say the object that this object's locking to, we want you to spawn it on top of that object. And if we just leave it default right now without setting up a lock. We will see what happens. And after waiting a little bit of time, we notice that nothing happens because we have not set up the lock. So if you don't lock first, it will not work. Now, if we set up a lock real quick and we set the lock to the Professor Baz object, let's say that's in the scene, and there is another video on lock object if you are needing to know. And I'm going to click on this and drag this up because we need to lock before we generate onto the lock. And if we hit play, we'll notice that the chair now generated on top of the player. Quick edit here to show an important interaction between lock object and generate object runtimes. If in lock object you were to select the objects to lock set by the object group, and in our case would be the player group, and then in generate object, if you were to still have center of object locked by this object selected, it would have a different interaction than what we're used to when we're locking object and then using a runtime to follow that lock object. And before we test this, just remember that Chair and Professor Baz, they are both a part of the player group. So as we test this scene, it generates in a certain amount of time. You would see that a chair generated at Professor Baz and a chair generated at the chair. And I will reset this so that you can see it again. So yep, it generated two objects at both player group objects. So the important thing to note here is that if you do lock to a player group or a group in general, then it will generate an object on each of those group objects. So that would be just something to consider as you're locking and then generating. And that is the end of this edit. We will continue on with the video.
So let's see, let's remove lock object now. We know what that does. And let's go down to adjust position X and Y. So here's where we can further specify where we want this to spawn. And since we don't have a lock anymore, I'm going to click on the center of this object and I'll leave the connection point for now. But let's just say that we wanted it to go negative 25 X, meaning to the left, 25 pixels. And we hit OK and we hit play, we would notice that when it spawns, it spawned a little more to the left than the connection point. If we took off the connection point, it would move 25 from the center of the object. And you can also do the same with the Y. You could spawn it in a different location to the Y. This other setting here is object generation probability. This is where you can specify a chance for this object to spawn. Let's say that we wanted to give this a 50% chance. This is in percentages. So a 50% chance, let's hit OK. And let's hit play. And it spawned on this one. If I hit F5 to reset, it spawned on this one. I'll hit F5 again. It did not spawn. Hit F5 again. It did spawn. And you'll see it did not spawn again. So the probability is there. And that is how you would set it. So now let's go down to these options and let's get into this first one here, which is to generate as a child object. And the best way to show an example of a child object is I'm going to select a different object to generate and I'm going to select the Professor Baz object. This is a player controllable object, so we will get to see a lot more of how it would work as a child. And before I click play, I'm going to change this back up to 100 probability. Now I'm going to hit OK. And before we play test, I'm going to go to the Professor Baz object and go to the display and parent child relationship. And under this section right here, objects, parent, child relationship parameters, this is what is going to govern this object when it's a child. So as we can see down in the elements inherited from the parent, we see that direction is ticked. And we'll just take one of these for example. So this object when it's a child is going to take the direction of the parent object. So if we hit play test and we spawn in or generate the ba Professor Baz, you'll notice that it is inheriting the direction of the bot which is facing down no matter even if I'm facing a different direction. Now if I was to take off direction so we do not want it to take the parent object's direction. And I was to hit OK. It'll spawn in and you'll see that it's defaulted left like it should be. And now it's facing up, right, and down. Now there will be a video covering all of this. But just for one more example, the reason it's not moving is because it's sticking to the parent. And if we said don't follow the parent object, we would see that when it generates, it now moves as a normal player object. So those are real quick examples of the parent-child relationship, and we will now get it back into the generate object runtime. I'm going to click off generate as child object and click on to the next one, which is match generated object orientation to this object. Now I will keep Professor Baz on since this will be another good example. If I was to hit OK with this and hit play, it's just going to match the direction that the bot is facing. So right now, the bot's facing down, and when P Professor Baz spawns in, he is now facing down. If we were good to go to the scene here, and click on the generate bot, and set his default position to facing 270, or left, and I hit play, we would see that now Baz spawns in facing left. So that is how that works, really simple. The next one is lower this object's display priority. And before we get into this setting, I just want to show exactly a display priority example. I'm going to first click off of use connection point. I'm going to hit zero on the X and I'm going to add five on the Y so it goes down a little bit when it generates. I'm going to hit OK here. Then I'm going to go to Professor Baz and I'm going to right click, select object settings. I'm going to put Professor Baz's display priority to 1. And it, the higher the number, the more priority it has. 
So I'm going to hit OK, and we are going to play test and see what happens. When the object spawns, you'll notice that it goes over the generate pot. So what this setting is referring to, you can probably start putting the pieces together now, is it's going to lower the display of the object spawn. So if we were to click the setting on, click OK, and click play test, we'll see that when it spawns, the object is now lower setting. So now on to the last setting in the generate object runtime. I'm going to click off lower this object's display priority and click on to attach generated object to the grid. Now, before we talk about the grid and exactly what that means, I'm going to set the X and the Y to zero and I'm going to use the connection point again for the Professor Baz object. I'm going to click OK and to introduce the grid, I'm going to go to another scene and I have the grid on right now, but you can see that there's a toggle grid display and you can turn it on and off. And the grid size is gonna be the tile size that you specified for your project. So this is one way to view the grid of where you would want it. Now, if we play test it here and we have it selected to attach to it right now, we can't really tell anything from this. So if we were to hit F1, and go to debug and hit show grid, it now shows the grid in our uh, play test. So if I was to hit F5, you'll see that it spawns within this grid. Now if I was to exit this, go back to object, into the runtime, and clicked off attached to the grid, and hit play test, we'll see that it just spawns according to the connection point. Remember the connection point was a little to the left and it did not snap it to the grid. So a couple things I wanna point out to wrap up this video is that the option settings, these are all and, meaning that every one that you have selected will happen. Even if they're all together, they will all happen. The other thing I wanna go over is adjust position X and Y. That counts for both the center of this object and the center of object locked by this object. It will offset both of these. However, it will not offset attach generated object to the grid. The grid will take priority over any adjustments you're trying to do. So just note that. And to end this, I'm going to change the generated object to not set. I am not gonna use connection point or at least not have it in the default. And I'm just gonna leave it how it would show up if you just selected this. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna come down here to the changeable even after placement on scene icon and I'm gonna click it on. And now we're gonna to go to the scene. I'm going to change the scene to where we were originally. And I'm gonna click on our generate bot, control copy and then paste a new one in and then paste another one in. And with the changeable even after placement on scene, we now have access to the generate object runtime on the scene and we can select a specific object for this object only. So I'm gonna select the chair and I'm gonna use the connection point for this one. And I'm gonna generate as a child. On this one, I'm going to generate Baz just in the center, not on the connection point. And with this one, I'm going to generate another generate bot and I'm gonna use the connection point and offset it up negative 25. And as we can expect, all three of these objects will do what they're told. I am going to turn off the show grid and restart it. And we will see that this one spawned the chair at the connection point, this one spawned the generate bot and went up negative 25 pixels. And then this one spawned Baz on top of the center and Baz has more priority as far as the display goes. So everything worked accordingly. And this is a great way to make specific things on specific scenes. So if you have any other cool ways that you have used generate object, feel free to comment or post links down below in the comments. And I will see you on the next video.